So for today's project, I helped my friend Brandon with his basement. He hired an electrician to put these lights in, and they ran the wires across the joist, which makes it impossible to hang a drywall up there. I'm not even sure that's the code. Plus, we want to put the different sides of the basement on different dimmer switches. So we'll go ahead and get that done. Tools necessary for job, as usual, is our trusty electrical tester. We want to take our cordless work light because we're cutting power off while we're working, which means there's no lighting. We need our fish tape to pull wire through the walls because we're installing switches. We're going to get the wire from the switches to the lights. Of course, our lineman pliers for tightening up our wires and making any cuts. Our big wire cutter is here to cut through the Romex, or the wire that we're going to be running. Our wire strippers to strip the ends off the wire so we can make our connections. And our needle nose pliers to help us get the wires around the uh, switches and the light fixture uh, connections. We're also going to need our screwdriver with bits. Our drill and drill bits, either a paddle bit or a hole saw just to get through the joist or the stud so we can run the wire. We're going to use our uh, cordless jigsaw here to make, cut our electrical boxes. Of course our impact driver and bits help tighten everything else down. And that's about it. So now we have our tools together, let's get to work. So for one side of the basement we're actually pulling power from here. We're going to route wire from here to this location where we're going to install the dimmer switch. Then from this location, we route wire up to the electrical junction box in the ceiling, which connects to all the lights on that one side of the basement. So the first thing we're going to do is trace out our electrical box. I'll drill a little starter hole before I get my saw ready to cut the hole. Now I punched out a hole in there, and we're going to route the wire from there to there. That's where our electrical box is going to be for our light switch. So we go ahead and route, we routed our wire. Right there, we're going to make a knockout inside that electrical box. Push the wire through the knockout and into the electrical box. You see the little metal flap up there that's kind of flapping around? Once we get our wire through there, we'll go ahead and tighten it down. Now this is Romex. It is too cold in his area. It's not too cold in my area. My area it has to be either conduit or BX. So again, we don't really talk about cold. Just cold is different everywhere. So we're going to get this wire through here, then we'll take our screwdriver and we'll tighten down that little clamp to hold the wire in place. So now we're going to route wire from here, this junction box in the ceiling, over to the light switch. And that way we'll be able to power all the lights on this side. So there the hole's been cut out for us to install our box. And after better evaluation, we decided instead to come off the back of this light. Because this light goes to that junction box, that way we can use less wire because this is closer to the switch. So we'll go ahead and knock that out there. And we run our wire through there and make our connections inside the top of this light. So we'll go ahead and start routing our wire. So here you see how the wire coming out from where the light switch will be. We route it over the top through the ceiling. And we're going to take it to right there. So we'll knock out that one punch out next to the wire over there. And that'll connect over to this box. So before we do that, just disconnect our original light switch, which is inside that box. And we'll be able to power all these lights off a new switch. Here the new box is installed, it's mounted to the stud. The wires have been ran through, so now we just knock that out. We'll feed our wires through into the top of this light. You see the new wire coming through, connections have been made, so now we're good to go. So now we make the connections to the back of our switch. I have more details on that in another video. And then it's just a matter of going to our power source. If we take our tester up here, we see that the power is live, We'll turn the light on also to show you. And then I'll go ahead and ask, ask the homeowner to find a proper breaker to turn this box off. That way we can go ahead and make our connections. Now the power's off. We're going to take our tester to check one more time just to be safe. All right, we're good. So the first thing we have to do is disconnect the old connections here. So we're going to take these wire nuts off so we can get to the wires that we're going to be taking our power from. Glad that the old person, the person who originally installed this, taped the wire nuts, which is I always recommend doing. It's just a little extra protection, make sure they don't vibrate loose or anything like that. Because if it gets loose, it can arc and that could be a problem. So we'll go ahead and get the tape off. We'll take the wire nut off. We're gonna do the white wires first. So we'll get the nut off. Then we we'll take our white wire that we ran. We you know feed it through here and we're going to wrap it around the other bundle of white wires. We'll take our pliers and get this as tight as we can by twisting them all together. We want this nice and tight. You don't want any gaps because if it gaps, 
there are gaps. You can get arcs. Arcs are basically sparks where it's trying to make a connection and it really can't. And arcing causes heat inside wire, and then that heat can cause an electrical fire. So you always want to make these connections as tight as you can. So after you get that nice and tight, we'll put the wire nut back on there, and then we'll go ahead and do our other wire. So just like the white wires, we get the wire nut off. This one's a little tight. I take my pliers and just give it a little twist. It's actually real good. You want it nice and tight anyway. We'll get that off. We'll take the black wire that we ran, connect to that, and we'll tighten it down for our pliers. Now again, always make sure you get this nice and tight so it doesn't arc, because you no know, arcing causes fires. So you want to get this nice and tight. Once we get that on there, we'll get the wire nut on there, and then we adjust address the ground. So the ground inside of this, which is this type of wire, it's called Romex. The ground inside of it is actually just a solid core copper wire with no insulation on it. Since the previous installer grounded the box with their ground, that means the box is grounded, so we'll go ahead and run our ground to the box also. We'll just wrap it around the screw here, and then when we tighten the plate down, everything will be grounded. So now that our connections are made, we can turn the breaker on, test for power. Power is good. Let's go test our switch. Slide the switch up. Lights come on. Lights go back off. Everything's good to go. So now for the other half of the basement. We're going to run power to the two lights on this side. So this light here and the other light from a light switch or a dimmer switch that we're going to install in the wall right there. Homeowner's cutting the hole in the wall for the dimmer switch. And then from there, we're going to go to the electrical box above him. That's where we'll get our power from to go to that switch and then to the two lights. So once that hole is cut, we'll go ahead and start fixing our wire. So now the hole's cut, let's work with our wiring. So the power for those two lights were originally coming off the back of this fixture on the opposite side of the basement. Since we're putting these on separate zones, we need to disconnect from here and then run this wire to the junction in the ceiling on the other side. So we're gonna make our, we're gonna disconnect from that fixture, we're gonna take this wire down and we're connect it to the electrical box. Now once we get it over there, we start making all our connections. So the yellow wire there was our original power source wire. So we're gonna reroute this because we don't want it laying across the top of joists like that because then you can't safely drywall a ceiling. So first to make sure the power is off, we'll disconnect it and we'll reroute it. So now we have that done, it's time to make our connections. So we're gonna take our two light fixture wires, run them in through the one side of the box, and then we will take the wire from our light switch, which we fished up through the wall with our fish tape and our power source wire and feed that through the other side of the box. Now you're able to do this with this type of box and this type of wire because you know, the code out here is different from me. So they would use these little push through connectors. Whereas with me, it would be in conduit or BX because of where I live. But since the code is different, we're able to do something different as far as being able to get this installed. So once we get this through here, we'll go ahead and make our connections. Now we're going to take all the black wires from the light fixtures, wrap those together, and we'll take the black wire from our power source, our light switch, and wrap that together. And then, oh, we also have our outlet coming out of the conduit, which also needs to be connected to the power source. Then we'll connect all the white wires together. So the black wire going down to the wall to the light switch will be connected up to the light switch and from the light switch is a red wire we will bring back up and connect to the light fixtures. Once all those connections are made, again we tighten our wire nuts, tape them down real good and we'll seal this box off because we're done with it. So now we go to the other box in the ceiling. Remember we, we ran all this yellow wire because we didn't want to lay across the joist. You can actually see the clips in the joist above me. So we have to redo these connections inside this box also. This is very simple. All the white wires go together. All the black wires go together. Now I forgot to mention the ground at the other box. So you make sure you get your ground wrapped up together nice and tight. Remember the ground in this is a solid coral wire with no insulation on it. That is your ground. And we also have to make sure we connect that ground to these boxes. You always want to ground all your boxes. Especially that this box is connected to this conduit and that conduit grounds the outlet at the base of the wall. So you go ahead and get our wire nuts on there. Then we'll go ahead and wrap our other wires up, get the wire nuts on that, tape it up. Then we'll seal this box off when we're done with it. Then we have one more set of connections to make before we go ahead and test the side lights. So here we have power coming from the main box going into this box down here. 
This power wire, you see the yellow wire, feeds this outlet, feeds our lights, and feeds the light switch up top. So after we make our connections, we'll slide that outlet in there to seal that off. We're going to go ahead and install this dimmer switch over here for a light fixture that will be inside this little cubby hole here that's not installed yet. But at least the switch will be installed so when the homeowner puts, those, puts that light switch, I mean puts that light fixture in, the switch is already there. So over here I'm installing the switch for the two lights on this side of the basement. I know the camera angle is bad, I'm sorry. But um, I do have a video that shows me doing a switch so if you need to see the wiring you can see it and get it done. It's very simple. We know black to black, black to red. And then we do our ground. So now that it's all done, we go ahead and test the switch. So we have the homeowner turn the breaker on, slide it up, lights come on, slide it back down, lights go off, and we're done. Now the only thing left to do is to clean up the rest of the wiring. One thing we did notice while we were working on the second side of the basement is the first side seemed to brighten and dim randomly on its own. So I went back through all the light fixtures, saw some grounds that were loose from the guy who originally installed them, and he didn't you know, probably ground the junction boxes either. So got that all taken care of. Now everything works great. So now you can see that the two sides of the basement are on their own switch or basically their own zones. So there's a dimmer switch for this side of the basement, and there's a dimmer switch for the other side. So I'll turn these lights off, and the lights next to me are still on. We'll turn these lights on, we'll walk around to the other switch, and demonstrate that side also. So we'll come over here, we'll slide this dimmer switch down. You see these lights will go off while the other half of the basement is still on. So this will be able to watch movies and things of that nature if I haven't cut down the whole basement. So the other thing we did was you see the wires running across the joists there? We rerouted all that wiring. We wanted to do that just so that, oh yeah, of course I gotta play the switch. So we did that to make it safer. That way, in case somebody drywalls the ceiling, there's not exposed wires that can get cut. These wires are now tucked up along the side of the joist, and it ran to the wall on the other side and down the corner. Because if you cut through there, with that wire laying across the joist like that, say you want to install a speaker later, you don't know where that wire is, you cut, you hit that wire, it sparks, you cause a fire. Job's done, homeowner's happy. Now I get back to my little buddy and two other projects we have up our sleeves. As always, please check out my other videos and also click that subscribe button and that like button. And have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you.